actually named section 2122 my own title, which is when A does not equal 1. Okay? So we were looking at the rabbit problem yesterday. We wanted the uh, rabbit to jump over the wall. And all of you guys drew these great graphs. And um, some of you drew them uh, starting here, like I did. I drew mine starting at 0, 0, having a vertex at 4, 3, and ending at 8, 0. I also accepted the answer. If you had the vertex right here at 0, 3, and this point was at negative 4, 0, and this point was at 4, 0, because you could make an argument for either. So I said, fine, you can do either one, right? They both make sense, okay? But for the purposes of this problem right here, I'm going to use the one that I did, okay? So my vertex, my vertex was at 4, 3. If yours was at uh, 0, 3, then just write 0, 3 there. That's fine, okay? My x-intercepts were at 0, 0 and 8, 0. Yours might have been at negative 4, 0 and positive 4, 0. You're going to get the same um, A. Your equation will be slightly different because it will be shifted, but your, your A is going to end up being the same, okay? So what we're going to do is how many of you checked your equation yesterday on Desmos? Some, some, most of you checked it, okay. Did you get, was your A correct? Was it, uh, was it um, compressed correctly? Did you type a fraction? Did you get really close, but not quite? Did you kind of see how it kind of got real, real close? Okay, that's because your A was not one, obviously, or even in this case, negative one, because it opened down, but it ends up being like a fraction. Or you could have even typed a decimal in there because a fraction can be converted to a decimal, right? So I'm going to teach you today how to find that A using your vertex and one of your intercepts, okay? It's kind of like when you're given the slope and a point on a line, you can use it to get the um, B, the Y-intercept. Anyway, it kind of works like that. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to substitute the values for h and k, which is your vertex, and x and y. Just one of your x and y's. So you're only going to pick one of the two points. Okay? I picked 0, 0. Why? Because it's easier. But you can pick either one. Okay? So you would pick either 0, 0 or 8, 0. If you did your shifted, you would pick either negative 4, 0 or 4, 0, right? Depending on which one you did, okay? So you start with the basic vertex equation, which is y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. And then you're going to substitute in for the h and the k. So here's my h, here's my k, and then I used 0, 0. Notice that everything gets plugged in for except what? The A. All of the Y gets plugged in for, the X gets plugged in for, the H gets plugged in for, and the K gets plugged in for. The only thing that doesn't get plugged in for is the A, and that's what you want to solve for. Okay? So you're going to follow order of operations, right? Make sure you follow order of operations. So you've got a set of parentheses. 0 minus 4 squared, 0 minus 4 is negative 4, negative 4 squared is 16. Then you're going to subtract 3 from both sides, and then you're going to divide both sides by 16, and you're going to get negative 3 sixteenths. Okay? That is your A. Okay? You already know the H and the K. So when you go to write it as a final equation, you plug in your H and your K, you plug in the A, and you get your jackrabbit's um, path, whatever, the, the, yeah, they're calling it a path, jump path, all right? Do 
you guys need to see that a little longer? Was anybody still writing? Okay, here, I'll make it just a little bit smaller, and then we can, there we go. See the whole thing for a second. Did I go too fast? No. Okay. Any questions on that? Or are you just still writing? Some people just look like they're still writing. Okay, we'll give you a second to write. Did you use negative four and pos uh, negative four zero and four zero? Okay. Your this equation would look different. Well, yeah, because your vertex would be different too, but your a should be the same, right? Because it's going to have the same. Okay. Anybody else still writing? We're good. Awesome. Okay, flip over to the top of page twelve. too far. Okay. So at the top of page 12, we have another jumping rabbit. It says the jackrabbit is jump, jumping along and encounters a brick wall that is two and a half feet high and one foot wide. Okay. Can he clear the wall if his jump is the same height and width as in problem 213? If so, how close, how close to or far away from the wall should the jackrabbit be when he jumps. Use your model to decide. Justify your reasoning with multiple, represent, ugh, rep, multiple representations. Okay. So the wall is one foot wide. So I made it go from uh, three and a half to four and a half because that puts the middle of it right at four feet. Right? Or, yeah. And then the top of the wall was two... 2.5. I wrote, let me make sure I write 2.5. 2.5, right? The total height of the wall was 2.5, and it's one foot wide. And so I drew in the rabbit's path, okay? So the graph is going to look like something like this. I also made a table. And the most important, uh, like copy down all the numbers, but the important numbers here is at uh, 4, you plug it into the equation we just looked at. At 4, you're going to get 3. So the rabbit will be 3 feet high. Is 3 feet higher than how far did it say? 2 and a half. So is the rabbit higher than two and a half feet high? Yes, he's three feet high. So he's gonna clear the wall, right? As long as he's got room to jump over it or enough space, like a, a running space. Most rabbits don't jump straight up, although I've seen some jump straight up. <laughs> they kind of make a little curve. So you're just gonna say the highest is three feet, so the jackrabbit will clear the wall. Any questions on the last part of the jackrabbit, the second part of the jackrabbit question? All right, we've got one more. Is anybody still writing? Can't tell. Okay. Well, you just came back, so. <laughs> You'll have to get it in your group, Ollie. Oh. You good? You good? All right, so the last problem in this section says, when Miss Bibby kicked a soccer ball, it traveled a horizontal distance of 150 feet and reached a height of 100 feet at its highest point. Sketch the path of the soccer ball and write an equation 
for a parabola that models it, okay? So I started at zero, zero, and the total distance this direction, horizontal distance, was 150 feet. And if, if it was picked in a perfect, perfect parabola, right, it's going to be symmetrical. So I went exactly halfway, which was at 75 feet. And the total height was 100 feet. So from there, I went up to 100. So I have my vertex at 75, 100. So I'm going to use that as my HK. Okay. Is everybody with me on the HK? 75, 100. You guys all see how I got that? 75 is half of the total distance of 100, uh, 150. And then the question told us it reached a height of 100 feet. Okay. So I've got my H and my K. Now I just need uh, one point to help me find the, the stretch or the compress. Okay. So I picked one intercept. I picked zero, zero, because it's easier, but you could pick the other one and see if you get the same answer. So pick 150, zero if you want. Then start with the original equation. Some of you can skip that because you have it memorized. You've seen it so many times now, right? And then you're just going to plug in. I plugged in the 75, 100. And then I plugged in the point zero, zero. And just like the last one, the only variable left is that A. So that A is what you want to solve for. Okay. All right. So we're going to simplify by using order of operations. Zero minus 75 is negative 75. Then we want to subtract 100 from both sides. And then you're going to square negative 75. I recommend doing that on your calculator, right? So you get 5,625. Divide both sides by the 5,625, and you get negative 100 over 5,625. You can put it into the equation just like that, or you can reduce it like I did. I reduced it all the way down to... Negative 4 over 225, plugged that in for the A. Does it make sense that it's negative? Yes, because it's opening down, right? Does it make sense that it's a fraction? Yes, because it's going to compress it, okay? And then we plug in our vertex, our 75, 100, and we have our equation.